There are certain universal constants that hold true across all of known space, the speed of light, the decay rate of quantum particles, and the fact that you never, under any circumstances, make a human grandparent actually stand up from their favorite chair. The Glaxon Empire was about to learn this lesson the hard way. Bob Pop Pop Henderson had his morning routine down to an art form aboard Starbase 247. At precisely 0700 station time, he'd shuffle into his favorite diner wearing his perpetual uniform of cargo shorts, compression socks, and a novelty T-shirt that read, My grandkids are out of this world, complete with a picture of Earth explosion launching babies into space. The shirt was a gift from his daughter, and he wore it without a shred of irony. The usual pop-pop, called out Clicks T from behind the counter three of their tentacles already reaching for the coffee pot, while another two worked the grill. The diner owner had long since stopped trying to explain that their species name was actually pronounced with a subsonic resonance that human vocal cords couldn't produce. After six months of Bob calling them Clixy, they'd given up and accepted their fate. You know it, Clixy, and make it quick. Got a video call with the grandkids in twenty minutes. Bob settled into his usual booth, the cushions perfectly worn to the shape of his posterior after three years of faithful service. They're learning about space travel in school this week, if you can believe it. Gonna show them how to calculate proper thrust vectors using my old maintenance manual. Clicks T's eye stalks wobbled in what passed for their species version of an eye roll. Bob, they're six and eight years old. Exactly, already behind schedule. Why, when I was their age? Bob launched into one of his favorite stories about rebuilding a fusion drive with nothing but duct tape and optimism, a tale that grew more impressive with each retelling. The diner's other patrons had learned to tune out Bob's morning storytelling sessions, though a few of the newer station residents still marveled at how a retired human mechanic had ended up as one of the station's most recognizable characters. The answer was simple. Grandkids. When Bob's daughter had married a centaurian diplomat and moved to the colony worlds, Bob had immediately requested a transfer to the nearest star base. Can't have the little ones growing up without proper grandparent supervision, he'd declared. The fact that nearest still meant several light years didn't deter him in the slightest. Thanks to quantum entanglement communications, Bob never missed a chance to spoil his grandchildren. Every morning at 0720 sharp, He'd fire up his private comlink and spend an hour teaching Zoe and Max everything from basic engineering to essential Earth history, which mostly consisted of dad jokes and stories about how things were different in his day. Order up, Clicks T announced, sliding a plate loaded with what they'd come to learn was a traditional Earth breakfast, eggs, bacon and pancakes arranged in a smiley face. Another of Bob's non-negotiable requirements. Thanks, Clixie, you're a real... Bob's voice trailed off as he noticed the station's news feeds suddenly going dark. One by one, the floating hollow screens that usually displayed everything from sports scores to stock prices winked out of existence. Clicks T's eye stalk swiveled toward the nearest viewport. That's odd. Are those Glaxon ships? Indeed they were. A small fleet of sleek, predatory-looking vessels had dropped out of hyperspace and taken up position around the station. Their gun ports were closed, but anyone who'd spent time around ships could see they were powered up and ready. Diplomatic visit, one of the other patrons suggested nervously. Has to be. The peace talks are still ongoing. Bob just quietly finished his breakfast, eyes narrowed slightly as he watched more Glaxon ships arrive. He'd spent enough time in space to know when something didn't feel right, and this situation was setting off all sorts of alarms in his grandfather instincts. Those instincts were proven correct moments later when the station's PA system crackled to life. Attention all residents of Starbase 247. This station is now under the protective custody of the Glaxon Empire. Please remain calm and comply with all peacekeeping protocols. This is a temporary security measure. Repeat, this station is now under the protective custody. Bob's fork clicked against his plate as he set it down with deliberate care. 
His grandkids' transport was due to stop at this station in six hours for refueling on their way to a school field trip. There was no way that timing was a coincidence. Oh dear, Clicks T murmured, their tentacles writhing anxiously. This isn't good. No, Bob agreed quietly, standing up from his booth for the first time in three years of morning routines. No, it really isn't. The Glaxon Empire was about to learn why that was a terrible mistake. The thing about being old, Bob had learned, was that people tended to look right through you. This proved especially true when those people were militant aliens implementing martial law. The Glaxon troops stormed through the station's corridors in their shiny power armor, completely ignoring the human grandpa shuffling along with his magnetic tool belt slightly hidden under his gut. Just heading to the maintenance shaft, he'd mutter whenever anyone glanced his way. Darn artificial gravity acting up again. Nobody ever questioned it. After all, who'd suspect the old human who spent most of his time showing vacation photos to anyone who'd stand still long enough? Bob made his way to his private quarters, careful to maintain his usual unhurried pace. Inside, he activated his quantum comm link, only to find exactly what he'd feared. All communications were being jammed. His regular call time with the grandkids came and went, and for the first time in three years, Pop Pop missed their morning chat. This would not stand. The station's security feeds were easy enough to access, not because Bob was some master hacker, but because he'd spent the last three years fixing them whenever they broke down. He'd also spent those years casually chatting with every maintenance worker, janitor and service staff member on the station. Amazing what people would tell you when you showed genuine interest in their grandkids. Well, 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 Bob muttered as he watched the Glaxon commander striding through the station's main concourse. The alien was tall, reptilian, and carried himself with the sort of arrogance that reminded Bob of every middle manager he'd ever dealt with. The name tag on his ceremonial armor read Valthuk. Through the security feeds, Bob watched Valthuk enter the station commander's office. The audio was crystal clear, another system Bob had maintained over the years. Your station's strategic location makes it the perfect staging ground, Valthuk was saying. Once the civilian transports begin arriving, the Human Federation will have no choice but to accept our terms. They're so predictably sentimental about their young... Bob's eyes narrowed. He'd spent 43 years working maintenance on everything from garbage scows to luxury cruisers. He'd learned that every machine, no matter how complex, had certain universal truths, the same he'd found applied to space stations and stuck-up alien commanders. Everything had a weak point, everything could break down and everything with the right motivation and enough duct tape could be turned into something else entirely. He pulled up the station's maintenance scheduling system, another piece of technology that mysteriously only worked properly when Bob was the one fixing it. With a few careful adjustments, he began rescheduling routine maintenance tasks, a lot of routine maintenance tasks, all for the next six hours as it happened. Time to call in some favours, Bob muttered, reaching for his personal comm device. Not the official station one. This was an old-fashioned radio he'd kept for emergencies. He'd spent years helping the station's service staff with their own little projects, from tweaking the cafeteria's food synthesizers to produce better comfort food to modifying the cleaning bots to be a little less zealous during night shifts. Now it was their turn to help Pop Pop. Clixy, he spoke into the comm. Remember that time I helped you modify your grill to make proper Earth-style hash browns? I need a favor. Several favors, actually. And get in touch with Miss Petula from Janitorial. You know, the one whose grand rabbits I babysit sometimes. Tell her Operation Nap Time is in effect. Bob stood up, his knees cracking in what he chose to interpret as approval. He'd spent three years being the harmless old human grandpa puttering around the station with his tools and his stories. Now it was time to show these Glaxons exactly why every species in the galaxy had evolved to respect their elders. Let's see how their fancy power armor handles a malfunctioning waste reclamation system, he chuckled, pulling up the maintenance access codes he'd officially forgotten years ago. Kids these days, always thinking they know better than their elders. Time for a proper lesson in respect. The first alarm klaxon went off somewhere in the distance, right on schedule. 
Class was in session. The first sign that something was wrong came when half the Glaxon troops found themselves stuck in various turbo lifts across the station. The doors simply refused to open, trapping the soldiers in what Bob liked to call time-out corners. Oh dear, Bob announced to no one in particular as he shuffled past a group of increasingly agitated Glaxons trying to override a turbo lift's controls. These old systems always acting up. Have you tried unplugging it and plugging it back in? They ignored him, of course. No one suspects the helpful old man. The second sign came when the station's cleaning bots underwent what could only be described as a revolution. Miss Petula from Janitorial had been particularly enthusiastic about Bob's suggested improvements to their programming. The bots now seemed to think that Glaxon power armor was desperately in need of a thorough polish, all at once with industrial strength cleaning solution. Stop, stand down! A Glaxon sergeant bellowed as three cleaning bots chased him down the corridor, their buffing attachments whirring menacingly. This is a direct order! My goodness! Bob called after him. They must really care about that scuff mark on your back plate. In the station's food court, Clicks T was doing their part magnificently. The food synthesizers were producing nothing but earth delicacies that, according to Clicks T, simply had to be tried. The Glaxon troops found themselves served nothing but extra spicy chicken wings and five alarm chili. It's a human delicacy, Clicks T insisted, all tentacles raised in apparent innocence. You wouldn't want to cause a diplomatic incident by refusing, would you? Bob watched through the security feeds as the proud warriors of the Glaxon Empire discovered that their environmental suit filters were surprisingly ineffective against capsaicin. But that was just the beginning. Bob had spent years memorizing every maintenance shaft, every access panel, and every quirk of the station's systems. More importantly, he'd spent years teaching other grandparents on the station about his favorite hobby, creative engineering. The Arcturian grandmother from Deck 7 had always been interested in his stories about pressure systems. Now she was putting that knowledge to use, creating fascinating variations in the atmospheric pressure that seemed to only affect corridors occupied by Glaxon troops. The Venusian grandparent, their species had seven genders, but insisted that grandparent was the most accurate translation. From environmental control had taken Bob's lessons about temperature regulation to heart. Somehow the climate controls in areas with high concentrations of Glaxon soldiers kept malfunctioning, alternating between sauna-like heat and temperatures that would make a penguin shiver. Must be those budget cuts, Bob said sympathetically to a group of shivering Glaxons. I keep telling them we need better maintenance coverage. Why, back in my day. They hurried away before he could finish. Everyone hurries away when an old human starts a sentence with back in my day. Another tactical advantage. In the station's security center, Commander Valthuk was discovering that technology has a way of becoming surprisingly complex when you need it most. Screens would flicker just as he tried to input commands. Doors would slide shut moments before he reached them, then open again with innocent chimes when he turned back. The station's AI kept mishearing his orders as requests for Earth classical music filling the command center with something called disco. This is impossible, Valthuk snarled after his fourth attempt to override the station's communications blackout, somehow resulted in all screens displaying an Earth entertainment program called Golden Girls. Oh, that's a good one, Bob commented as he walked past the security center, tool belt jingling. You know, it reminds me of this time back in 43 when... But Valthuk had already stormed off missing what was actually a very relevant story about the time Bob had rigged an entire cruiser's electronics to run through a toaster. The next few hours were filled with what could only be described as a masterclass in passive-aggressive engineering. Gravity became subjective. Navigation systems developed peculiar interpretations of straight ahead. The station's public announcement system started offering helpful advice about proper posture, and the importance of a balanced breakfast. And through it all wandered Bob, helping wherever he could with grandfatherly concern. Every malfunction was met with a story about similar problems back in his day. 
Every frustrated Glaxon received a hard candy from his seemingly bottomless pocket and a lengthy explanation about how humidity affects electronic systems. By hour five, the proud Glaxon invasion force had been reduced to a collection of frazzled, overheated, overcleaned troops who flinched at the sound of cleaning bots and had developed a profound distrust of turbolifts. That's when Commander Valthuk made his fatal mistake. He decided to find out who was responsible. Unfortunately for him, he was about to discover why the station's maintenance crew had a betting pool not on if Bob would snap, but on how spectacular it would be when he did. The commander was about to learn the hard way you never make a human grandparent actually stand up. Commander Valthuk finally tracked down Bob in Maintenance Access Junction 7B, which connected to both the station's waste management systems and, purely coincidentally, the main environmental controls for the docking bays. Bob was elbow deep in a control panel humming something called Sweet Caroline, while making what he would later describe as necessary adjustments. Step away from the controls. Valthuk's voice carried the kind of authority that came from never having dealt with a human grandfather before. Our systems detected unauthorized access originating from this section. You're surprisingly clever for a primitive species, but this ends now. Bob slowly extracted himself from the panel, taking exactly as much time as would irritate someone in a hurry. He made a show of cleaning his hands with a rag that probably hadn't been cleaned since the station was built. You know, Bob said conversationally, my grandson Max had a tantrum like this last week. Of course he's six, so he has an excuse. What's yours? Valthuk's scales flushed a deeper shade of green. You dare mock me? I am the commander of this tactical operation. Your interference ends now or I'll be forced to make an example of you. Tactical operation, Bob raised an eyebrow. Is that what we're calling temper tantrums these days? My daughter told me young folks were getting creative with their labels, but this is ridiculous. Two Glaxon soldiers moved to flank Bob, their armor still bearing the marks of extremely aggressive cleaning bot attention. Their weapons weren't drawn. Apparently someone still had enough sense to realize that shooting an unarmed grandfather would be a public relations nightmare. Your species young are due to arrive soon, Valthuk said, his voice dripping with smugness. Once they're in our custody, the Human Federation will have no choice but to negotiate. And you, you'll spend the rest of your retirement in a holding cell thinking about how your interference almost ruined everything. Bob's usual grandfatherly smile faded, replaced by something that made the Glaxon soldiers unconsciously step back. It was the kind of expression that reminded everyone that humans hadn't become a spacefaring species by being nice all the time. Son. Bob said, and somehow that one word carried more threat than any battle cry. You're about to learn why you never make a grandparent actually stand up. And what exactly do you think you can do? Valthuk scoffed. You're just one old human. Bob's smile returned, but it wasn't the friendly one he usually wore while dispensing hard candies and advice about proper hydration. This was the smile of someone who had spent 43 years learning how things worked, and more importantly, how to make them stop working. You know what the problem is with you young folks, Bob asked, reaching for his tool belt. You never learn to respect your elders. Always rushing around with your fancy power armor and your tactical operations, never stopping to think that maybe, just maybe, the old timer who's been fixing this station for three years might know a thing or two about how it really works. He pulled out what looked like a universal remote control, clearly cobbled together from spare parts and held together with liberal amounts of duct tape. For instance, Bob continued, did you know that the waste management system is connected to the emergency ventilation protocols? Fascinating bit of engineering, that. Or that the artificial gravity can be selectively adjusted by sector. And don't even get me started on what happens when you reverse the polarity of the cleaning bot's friend or foe recognition systems. Valathuk's confident expression began to waver. What are you talking about, old man? I'm talking about 43 years of experience, son. 43 years of fixing things that smart young folks like you said couldn't be fixed. 43 years of learning that every system has a bypass, every protocol has a loophole, 
and every machine can be convinced to do something its designers never intended. Bob's thumb hovered over the remote's largest button. And most importantly, I'm talking about what happens when you threaten a human grandparent's grandkids. One of the soldiers finally found his voice. Commander, I'm detecting massive power fluctuations throughout the station. Oh, and one more thing, Bob added cheerfully. I should probably mention that I've spent the last five hours installing some special modifications. Would you like to see them? Without waiting for an answer, he pressed the button and the lights flickered and, and all hell broke loose. The first thing to go was gravity. Not everywhere, just in very specific corridors where Glaxon troops had congregated. Bob had spent years fixing the artificial gravity systems, which meant he knew exactly how to unfix them in the most inconvenient ways possible. Whoops, Bob said, as Valthuk and his soldiers began floating helplessly. Looks like someone forgot to carry the one in their gravity calculations. You know, this reminds me of a problem we had back in 39. But Valthuk wasn't listening. He was too busy watching in horror as every cleaning bot on the station suddenly activated at once, their optical sensors glowing an ominous red. Bob had introduced them to a new definition of dirt, specifically any Glaxon power armor that wasn't actively surrendering. Detected untidy soldiers initiating deep clean protocol, announced the station's PA system in Miss Petula's most authoritative janitorial voice. That's when the station's other grandparents launched their coordinated offensive. They called it Operation Early Bird Special, and it was beautiful. The Arcturian grandmother from Deck 7 activated her modified pressure differentials, creating a series of one-way air currents that began herding floating Glaxon troops like leaves in the wind. Any soldier who managed to grab onto something quickly let go when the handholds turned out to be connected to the station's heating system now running at what Bob called proper baking temperature. On the promenade, the Venusian grandparent had reprogrammed the food court synthesizers. Every emergency ration pack in the Glaxon soldiers' suits was mysteriously replaced with earth hot sauce. Not the tourist stuff, the kind that came with warning labels and liability waivers. My goodness, Bob called out to the chaos around him. All this excitement isn't good for my blood pressure. Anyone care for a hard candy while we wait for this to sort itself out? Valthuk tried to activate his command override codes, but the station's computer had developed selective deafness. Instead of responding to his commands, it began playing what it claimed were Earth's greatest hits. The command center was filled with something called Baby Shark on endless repeat. That's when the waste management systems kicked in. Bob had spent the last five hours teaching them new and exciting ways to redistribute their contents. The Glaxon ships docked to the station discovered that their pristine hulls were suddenly in need of a very thorough wash. You know, Bob mused as he watched Valthuk try to simultaneously fight off a cleaning bot and cover his ears to escape the music. My grandson Max had a remote-controlled toy ship last birthday. Funny how adding a few cleaning bot motors and waste management pressure can turn a whole docking bay into something similar. The Glaxon ships were indeed moving but not under their own power. The combination of strategically aimed waste management jets and repurposed cleaning bot propulsion units was pushing them into what Bob called a timeout formation. Stop this immediately, Valthuk demanded, his voice somewhat undermined by the fact that he was spinning slowly in zero gravity while being pursued by a cleaning bot with a feather duster attachment. Oh, I would, Bob said, checking his watch. But you see, I'm expecting some grandkids in about twenty minutes and I still need to tidy up a bit. You understand how it is. Always want to make a good impression. That's when the Grey Brigade made their final move. Every grandparent on the station had contributed their special talents to what followed. The Jovian triplet grands had modified the internal sensors to create what they called a light show. The Martian elder had taught the maintenance drones to sing. Even Click's T had gotten into the spirit, using their tentacles to conduct what could only be described as a symphony of chaos. The station became a madhouse of floating soldiers, aggressive cleaning bots, temperature fluctuations, pressure differentials, and the worst of Earth's musical history playing at various speeds. Through it all walked Bob, offering helpful advice about proper posture and the importance of staying hydrated. You're insane, 
Valthuk gasped as he fended off a particularly determined cleaning bot armed with a loofah. This is impossible. Impossible, Bob chuckled. Son, I once fixed a fusion drive with rubber bands and a paper clip. This is just a standard Thursday for a grandpa who's been told his grandkids might be in trouble. That's when the station's long-range sensors picked up approaching ships. A lot of ships. The Human Federation's 7th Fleet had arrived, fashionably late as usual. Well, would you look at that, Bob said, checking his watch again. Just in time for my regular call with the grandkids. Now, are you folks going to surrender properly, or do I need to tell these cleaning bots about the scuff marks on the back of your armor? Balthuk looked at his troops, those he could see through the chaos, and made the first wise decision of his day. We surrender. Just, just make it stop. That's better, Bob nodded approvingly. See what happens when you listen to your elders? The Grey Brigade had won the day, and somewhere in the background Baby Shark played on. In the aftermath of what would become known as the Grandparent Incident, several important changes were made to galactic security protocols. The most significant was the addition of a new threat assessment category, Code Grandparent. It was the only warning level that came with both a danger rating and a reminder to call your elders more often. Bob, of course, was back in his usual booth at Clicks T's Diner by the next morning, acting as if nothing unusual had happened. The only noticeable difference was that the station's maintenance crew had modified his booth with a small plaque that read Reserved for the Terror of Deck 7. And that's why you always double-check your connections, Bob explained to his grandkids through the quantum video call, having just finished telling them a heavily edited version of yesterday's excitement. Isn't that right, Commander Valthuk? The Glaxon commander, now permanently assigned as the station's cultural liaison, a punishment posting if there ever was one, looked up from his plate of extra-mild pancakes. Yes, sir. Absolutely, sir. Double-check everything. Triple-check if Mr. Henderson is on the same station. See? Bob beamed at his grandkids. Even the nice commander understands the importance of proper maintenance procedures. Now who wants to learn about how to reprogram a cleaning bot to sing lullabies? Zoe and Max cheered. On the other side of the diner, several cleaning bots swiveled their sensors anxiously. The Grey Brigade had largely returned to their usual routines, though there were rumours that they met regularly for what they called engineering discussions. But what station security suspected was more like a grandparental defence force planning committee. Nobody investigated too closely. Some things were better left unquestioned. Miss Petula's cleaning bots had reluctantly been restored to their original programming, though they still showed an unusual enthusiasm for polishing any Glaxon armor that entered their sensor range. The station's waste management systems had been reset, but now occasionally played musical tones when activated. No one could prove Bob was responsible, but he did tend to hum along with the pipes. You know what the real lesson is here? Bob asked, addressing both his grandkids and the small crowd that had gathered to hear his morning stories. It's not about the engineering, or the tactical advantages of cleaning bot modifications, or even about how to properly weaponize a waste management system. He paused for dramatic effect, something he'd gotten quite good at over the years. The real lesson is about respect. Respect for your elders, respect for the people who keep things running, and most importantly, Respect for the fact that every grandparent in the galaxy has one thing in common. We've got nothing but time to figure out how things work and how to make them work differently. The station's PA system chose that moment to play a few bars of Sweet Caroline. Bob swore it was just a coincidence, but the timing was suspiciously perfect. Now, he said, turning back to his video call, who wants to hear about the time I taught your mother how to optimize a warp core using only a rubber band and a positive attitude. As his grandkids cheered and the station settled back into its normal routine, Bob Henderson, known to some as Pop Pop, to others as the Terror of Deck 7, and to Glaxon Tactical Command as that terrifying old human, smiled contentedly. He had his family, his station, and enough duct tape to fix anything that needed fixing. Or unfixing, as the case may be. The Glaxon Empire had learned an important lesson about human grandparents, 
and somewhere in the station's maintenance shafts a cleaning bot hummed Baby Shark to itself, dreaming of loofers and unlucky soldiers. Some said the station was never quite the same after that day. The gravity occasionally hiccuped. The waste management system sometimes performed what could only be described as percussion solos, and every cleaning bot on board had developed a distinctive personality. But that's what happens when you make a human grandparent stand up. Things change, usually with duct tape, always with style, and inevitably accompanied by a story about how things were done back in the day. Just ask Commander Valthuk, he's become quite good at nodding along during story time.